Uh, and by the way, Harriet, uh, your point is well taken about using existing, you know, we have that study, but about, I think it was about four or five years ago, the State Office of Economic Development came and they led a, a you know, community right, remember you were part of that, and that information is still, so that, that's a resource that we're going to, I mean, we're not going to reinvent the wheel here because there, there's a lot of stuff that's been done. The problem is, is that we've done this work and it's sat on the shelf. And now, you know, that's why we started off with, let's stop talking, let's start doing, let's, let's get some action. So, uh, at the last meeting I mentioned uh, the possibility of a mobile application. I said we'd have a demonstration of the mobile app uh, at uh, this meeting. We're going to have two things, actually, uh, the mobile app and then Dr. Bowen has agreed to share with us some of his uh, experiences with Cheyenne, Wyoming. But first off, I'd like to introduce Mr. Jay Martinez and his wife, Era, uh, who uh, have, uh, uh, have a concept for a mobile application, and uh, they're going to present that information to us today. I want to mention something. When you look at this thing, understand this is not a ploy and this is not an attempt to take over anybody's uh, current websites or what you have. Consider this a layer where we, this mobile app, which everybody uses in today's world, uh, you're going dri driving down the highway, you want to know what's going on in, in the next city you're approaching, you get that app and this app will direct people to your own sites or whatever. The, the concept is, is, is a great one. So Jay, you got it. Thanks for having uh, Aaron myself here. Uh, I know. One second. Might mention that Jay is the president of the Hispanic Chamber, so uh, we now Don't have. Don't throw anything <laughs> at uh, we, uh, We've been here almost two years, about a year and a half. Um, I know a lot of you, most of you, uh, some of you I've seen, I've never really met. But um, we've been doing a lot of different things in town. Uh, just to give you a little background of what we do, my uh, first job here was, I was 15 years old. I was uh, the designer for all the ads in the Chronicle News while I was going to college here. Um, since then, I've obtained another three degrees. I have two bachelor's, two associate's degrees. Uh, my majors are media, animation, and marketing. Um, I've taught these programs at Art Institute, one of the best art institutes in the nation. Um, DeVry, ITT, high tech, and so on. And I've also worked in every single part of this business, from silk screening to design to full marketing, animation, video. I have a lot of experience in doing this. And in the last 15 years, I've pretty much been self-employed in the last 15 years. I've worked some other projects, but overall, I consider myself an expert in marketing. Um, I've worked with some of the best out there. And marketing is very simple. The hard part about it is staying on top of technology. So uh, since I met Era, we kind of separated from our other partners and we started our own business. We have a business called Merch Media, which does marketing in Colorado, but mostly, mostly nationwide business. We have everything around us, which had stopped. Well, basically, we were selling the around Trinidad websites to other places. We were approached to put it up. It was never our plan to put up the around Trinidad or do the magazine. It's in a great response, okay? So we're gonna keep that around. But on top of that, I see everybody wanting the same thing, okay? Uh, we all wanna bring more business here. We wanna pull people off the freeway. And it's not really as hard as we're all talking about it. Um, usually, Era does the presentations because I don't know how to put the cherry on top of things, so I offend people sometimes. So if I do, I'm not trying to. Um, the websites in town are very dated. They're very, very dated. Um, city. Um, I know tourism is a new one, I don't want to offend anybody there, but it's still dated from the technology that it's built with, okay? Um, so if you want to go ahead and go to the first one here. Um, okay, so we all know we have a resource on the freeway. I don't think we are tapping into it the way we could. Uh, the interstate can bring in millions of dollars here into town, okay? The problem of why we are not pulling people off the freeway is we're not speaking their language. We're printing maps, we have billboards. Most people, when we're traveling, like Eris next to me, she's looking things on the on her phone and figuring out where we're going. She's not looking at the billboards. And that's most people traveling, okay? They're not stopping at the Welcome Center. I bet you, well, I'm gonna go into that. But the Welcome Center is a great thing for people that are stopping there, but what about all the people that are passing by the Welcome Center? So, 
On average, 14,900 cars are traveling over the freeway every single day. Okay, that's an average. That's a lot of people. And if you go to the next one for me, there is 1.5 people in each one of those cars on average. Now, some of these numbers you might argue with, like uh, the economy uh, four times, that's actually seven. 1% um, in a return on a marketing plan is usually really low. A good marketing plan is going to be 2.5% to 10% if it's amazing, okay? So I'm working with smaller numbers here because if we had an opportunity to do this, I don't wanna shoot for millions and billions of dollars and tell you that when it don't happen, okay? I think it's just a good start. So at 1.5 people, if you multiply that, that's 75,000 people who would spend an average of $100 here in our economy. Then, of course, that's $7.5 million. You multiply that by four, it's actually seven, but if we go into four, that's $30 million into our economy. That's a lot of money for what we're not tapping into. I mean, it can help us fix our buildings. It can help us do a lot of different things. It can keep businesses open. It can help us, uh, more people are gonna want businesses here if there's people stopping. Um, so, yeah. The solution, today's solution, and this isn't uh, just uh, Eris and I's idea. It's not my business. There's a lot of people that have thought of doing this. People approach us about this. It's the community's idea. It, what we are here for is we can actually implement this and do it correctly. Um, the mobile application basically is just a piece of it, like Lou said. It's just a piece of everything. We have to take some steps in getting everybody online. Even if it's a splash page and you have somebody else do it, there's everybody needs to have a website that's designed correctly so that people can find us when they're doing searches for Southern Colorado. Um, because somebody types in uh, Mount Carmel and they come to the top does not mean it's marketed correctly. What we need is health and wellness and they're in Southern Colorado, they type that, Mount Carmel needs to come up. And I know a lot of these, Mount Carmel's doing a great job with their website. There's a few people here that are, there's a lot of people in town that are moving this way and doing really good. But this is just a piece. We want a place where everything can have a, place to sit, kind of like a library. This would be part of it where they can get to it on their phone. We'd also be able to extend this out to GPS systems, so when they're traveling, we have little red dots there. We also would have a website, so when they're searching for places to go, or um, typing in something, Trinidad does come up. So why are we gonna create a mobile app? Um, more than half of consumers bring mobile devices on their trips, anywhere they're going, they have their mobile devices. So they're typing in addresses, they're typing in names, food, dining, all these different things. The, I didn't even know this number until we started doing some more research for this presentation. 89% of them are acting on that. Okay, so 89% of these people that are typing in uh, gas stations, they see a Trinidad app to get cheaper gas, they download it, they're acting on what is actually happening, um, or what they're actually seeing. Um, for this to happen, just because you put an app out there does not mean everybody's gonna download it and know it's there. So between the newspapers, the businesses, we have a sticker on the window saying download this thing. Um, billboards, all these different things to push them to download it and when they're doing searches, they're also going to find it. So if we can get 89% of that 75,000 people to actually act on this app, I mean, it's a, it's a very, it's a no-brainer. I mean, it's very easy to attract people if you're speaking the language. I think um, owners need to realize as part of the community, when you, started a when you start a business, everybody knows they need a business card. But I don't understand where the not knowing that they need a website is just as important. If you're a mom and pop shop, if you are even a business uh, that's two people working out of their house, you still need to have that website available, okay? Um, that's how people are gonna find us. So just a few more numbers for you guys here. 23% um, have reviewed um, hotels, restaurants, or attractions that they visited using a mobile app. 38% post status updates. Now, back to everybody having a website, everybody being part of this app, everybody being on Facebook. Even if you don't have a business, if you're on Facebook talking about Trinidad, that helps everybody know about this. It's a popularity contest. The more people talking about Trinidad, the more people that are gonna see it, the more people that are gonna stop. So, 
38% of these people that are using our app are gonna say, I'm in Trinidad and I just seen the biggest canary I ever saw. And they're gonna post this up on it. Well, somebody in Florida is gonna say, that's cool, I've never seen a canary that big. And it starts creating this whole little train of information. That's good for us, okay? We need to create that. And regardless if we do an app or do websites, everybody has to start bringing technology into their businesses and the community so that we can start helping turn it down in that way. Cleaning up the town, putting up billboards, all those different things are great, but we also need to speak the technology language to the people that speak that way. 75% um, use GPS devices when they're traveling, being if they go to Google Maps on their phone, if they downloaded an app, they have TomTom Tom Garmin. We are one of the three companies in the United States that can optimize for GPS systems. Uh, Eric and I don't just work out of our house and it's just us too. We have a few people employed here, but we also have a whole team in Fort Collins and this is what we do for them. 59% um, of travelers um, use GPS systems on a mobile device, so that's being cell phones, um, iPads, and so on. Um, here I'm not gonna, I, don't wanna, I only have 15 minutes, so I don't wanna go into each one of these, but um, these are actual facts that are out there. The one thing I really wanna point out though is we want people to stop here. When you want people to stop for business, obviously you want them to have money. People usually um, are gonna spend more money when they're either well-educated or they have a high income, right? The, more, the higher um, education level there is, and the more money people make, regardless of the age group, the more they use mobile devices, okay? So it is definitely our target market. If they're using a mobile device, they're probably gonna spend 100 bucks in this town when they stop. So, I mean, this is definitely gonna be going to the target market I think we all are looking for. Um, okay, so the mobile application. Now, these are just some screenshots. We've already developed a lot of different things for mobile apps. Nothing's etched in stone, it can be anything, and really the whole idea for this presentation is to get everybody's ideas and say, hey, I'd love to have this part. Or for schools, you wanna be able to have uh, the local people log in and see uh, who the student of the month is, or who the uh, employee of the month is, whatever it is. You can add pretty much anything to a mobile application. So we'll have the main part for visitors, is we're gonna have uh, visitor information, uh, lodging, dining, shopping, places, events, nightlife. There's not a lot of night, night, night here, uh, nightlife here, but we're hoping to build that. Um, hotels, arts, museum, all this stuff can be part of here at their business. <coughs> so if you look at some of the images here, it's like Explore Trinidad. Big thing that Trinidad does have, it's a beautiful place, but there's a lot of history here. And I don't know all that history. It's not all on the web. Every person in this town has a story. So we are also going to have a place here where there is history. So if they go to the Big Canary, they can understand why the next the Big Canary is there. <laughs> or what the coal miners memorial is all about, or where the vets are, uh, you know, the, the vet, veteran memorials, all these different things that are here, they can have a story behind it. Um, a lot of people don't realize the whole story behind Simpsons Rest and why we have Kit Carson Park. There's a lot of things there, and your educated people, which are our target market, are gonna want to read that. Eventually we could have them playing audio, playing video, and so on. Um, map of the area. Now, if I'm at uh, La Quinta, stay in here, and they have a card that I download this app. Now I can click on it and say what's around me. I can plan to go into the Mitchell Museum, and then I know uh, there's a restaurant across the street or a cafe across the street. It'll let you plan your trip. It'll show you everything that's available. Um, let's see, we talked about the historical parts, and I'm gonna go into how we're actually gonna populate this too. Um, area map, and when they click on a business to eat, they can click on their menu, see what they want, they can click a button to call them, they can click a button to pretty much do anything that we can dream up. Get a map there, all that good stuff. Um, Facebook check-ins and status. Like we were talking before, they'll be able to talk to their friends and tell them where they're at and what they're doing, which gives us more information out there on the web. Um, Big part of this is we cannot just build an app and say, here it is, I hope it works, and good luck, we charge people monthly, and expect it to work. Tourism, the city, everybody needs to be a part of this. Mont Carmel, everybody needs to put their piece into it. I know Mont Carmel is doing an app type thing right now. 
if everybody else did an app as well and connected back and forth, the more information that's out there, the easier it is for everybody else to be found. So everybody's got to play ball with this. The business owners, um, individuals that care about the development of the city, they can be posting, they can help with um, history, they can do a lot of different things. Um, another really exciting part about this is coupons and specials. Let's say that you have a restaurant or a bar and you're slow on Wednesday. You can log into your panel and say two for ones for the next hour and anybody that's connected to this app will get that immediately and they can see that. So you can communicate to anybody that is actually connected to the website or the app itself. Uh, again, I'm not going to go too much in detail. If any of you have more questions and you know have some ideas, we'll be available for those. But um, basically, we talked about the location map, the direction, the video. They're going to be able to access this from anywhere. And you can say, I like this place, I want to see it. Click a button and you'll go into a list. You can have like 10 lists where you want to eat for the next two days, what you want to see. You want to go down to Ludlow, you want to go down to Trinidad Lake, and it will create all of this for you. They can do searches for things. So if they're into water skiing and they have a boat or anything like that, they can type that in and it'll show them where they can go. Um, if they're uh, from here, and maybe they live somewhere close, and there's an event they want to go to, like Santa Fe Trail Days, they've seen a bunch of advertising about it, they can click on that, and because they have their app, it'll let them know two days before it started, or 10 minutes before it starts, so they can make it down here. So there's a lot of interactive things that it will have to make people's experience uh, fun and memorable. Okay. Um, application will have a big problem with applications is Trinidad does not have the best place for reception for some cell phones. So let's say that we have this app and we have all this money and time put into it and they walk down to the other side of the corner shop and they lose connection, which happens to me all the time. Um, the app, the part about what we can do differently than what other people do is we can do it correctly. We think about things like that. The app is going to download all the main information, the maps, everything to their phone. So if they lose any of that connection, then they just can't watch the videos or they can't see some of the images, but they always have their map. They'll be able to call, they'll be able to do these different things. Um, we can add featured pages. So let's say that uh, to keep the app going and pay for it, every restaurant, I want every restaurant to be listed on it, but let's say you want to come up on top when they type in state. We can have page links there so we can help generate money for the application through the page links and advertisement. Um, and the really big part about this is the app is just a way to communicate to the other end. We're going to have a piece that is a website, so it's a community website as well, where you can have all your links to your websites and all these different things. And every business owner, any individual that's putting in history is going to have a login. They'll have access to either their business or maybe just the history part if they're just an individual in town that has a lot of information about history. They could go in and enter their information, change their specials on the app, they could change their hours, all their sales. So it's going to be self-sufficient eventually once everybody's trained and has it. Go. So if you decide that you want to write a story about Kit Carson in your history, there will be all this information that you can put up. It'll be kind of like a live uh, encyclopedia for Trinidad. So the businesses, the organizations, all these different things will all have a place to live in Trinidad online. Okay. Uh, next one. Internet is a resource for Trinidad. I think we all know that, but I still run into a lot of people that look at me like I have three heads and I'm crazy. We need to get online. Every single person needs to get online, regardless of how we do that. When you do do it, just make sure you're doing it correctly and that uh, you can be found on the internet. Having a website is pointless if you can't be found through Google, Facebook, any of these other things. Um, how do we open up our community to them? If, uh, we optimize a website where everybody can be connected. We're putting together a plan where we can get people with a splash page for maybe as little as $100 a month for business if they can't afford a website. Um, on top of that, we'll get them set up on Google Places. We'll set up their Facebooks. We want to set up uh, presentations where we can teach people how to market them correctly on Facebook. Uh, there's a lot of little tricks out there that are free for us that a lot of people aren't using. Um, Search engine optimization, all these different things are going to help us come up. And uh, again, the GPS, the GPS optimization, the phone app, they're all just pieces of the puzzle. We all have to kind of pull together and build a network. 
basically we're going to have a Turnet Network where everything can be found and we can talk about and all our organizations and so on. Um, so just to kind of uh, recap on how this works, okay, I did a little graphic here to explain to you what we're going to be doing. Um, I'm going to go backwards though because I think it kind of starts backwards. If you look at the top where it says turn dead local residents and travelers. This app is not just for travelers, it's for people uh, that are local. If they have their app on their phone and let's say SCRT is doing uh, a new play for young adults, it would go to their app and say, hey, this is opening up Friday. So it's for everybody that's part of this community as well as travelers. Jake, qu question for you. Uh, let, let's say you have this app and what you talked about earlier, would you be able to go on your Facebook page and say, hey, here's the Trinidad app and here's how you can download it? Of course. That's, I'm going to get to that too. That's having, like I said, having the app and the website are pointless unless you get it out to the public. And that's when I was talking to everybody's Facebook, everybody communicating this and marketing this, we can get out to millions of people. So we start over here. All of them are going to be able to find us through GPS if this is created from the infrastructure we have put together. They're also going to be able to connect to um, the website, which is on the computer there, and the website's going to go back and forth to the app. So everything that's on the website will go back to the app. So when it's updated, it'll be live updated to the actual application itself on the phone. Um, also, Trinidad <coughs> residents, business owners, and so on are going to have access to that admin panel so that they can change the app on a daily basis and every hour if they want it to. So, Again, everybody has to be a part of this for this to actually work and be very successful right out of the gate. City of Trinidad, Los Angeles County, business, uh, all the business owners, uh, tourism, local residents, chamber of uh, commerce, everybody's got to be part of this. And again, if you're going digital and you're part of this, you need to have a website so when somebody finds you on the app and they want to know more about you, they can click on the button and go to the website. So all of this is going to talk to each other. It's going to be its own infrastructure. It then, of course, is going to generate money because people are going to be able to find us. They're going to, uh, what I've learned in marketing, it doesn't have to be the best place in the world to get them to stop you. We need to make it the best place in the world once they stop you. Okay, so we can advertise to people and get them off of the freeway, being if uh, we're giving them discounts on gas, or maybe restaurants are doing two for one for new visitors. I mean, there's a lot of different things we can do. But it's going to have a search network. Um, it's going to allow us all to network like we're doing here, but digitally. We can post our comments and have a login as a member here or as a person here in the community. And I can see what you have to say. I can see what you have to say. And it's not just our Facebook, but we'll be able to network, communicate, work together. It's going to have fast information to people's fingertips. Um, it's going to help with tourism, economic development, communication. And it's going to help us bring new ideas. Somebody can mention something in our little board there and say, I'd like to try this out in the app. Um, all of that moving up right into the, your hand right there where they can just press a button and see everything Trinidad has to offer. So doing all of that, of course, we end up with growth. If money's coming in off the freeway, then we can have more businesses. We can have more jobs. And I mean, it's, it's a piece of the puzzle. It's not going to fix everything, but I think it's an important piece that we're not all really looking at in town. So conclusion, how long is this going to take, how expensive? Uh, expenses are, of course, going to be determined on what we decide to do with it. Is there going to be a lot of history in it? Are we going to have to do research? Um, are we going to do video? Are we going to do audio? Are we just going to do pictures? So uh, it's, it's open for discussion. I just want to see if anybody is interested in sitting down and really taking a good look at this and making this happen. Um, if we started today, we could have it up in 90 days. Of course, it's not going to be completely finished, but uh, your production, uh, your pre-production is planning and so on, so we spend 30 days in doing that to decide exactly what we want. Putting it up online is only going to take another 30 days. We have a lot of the parts of the puzzle already put in there. And then, of course, uh, post-production will be tested. We're going to get it out to everybody. We're going to drive to the other side of town and click on things and see if it actually works. When you're building a piece of software like this, it doesn't always work. You have to test it. you got to take the buzz out. So by the time summertime comes around, when we have a big tourist season, we can have something for our tourists to actually learn everything about Trinidad and go where they really want to go without having to go up and down the streets. Um, we can, like I said, uh, future phases of this, we can go in and add a 
image recognition, uh, recognition so they can hold it up at the Fisher's Peak and it'll say Fisher's Peak and it'll know it's Fisher's Peak and give them a whole story behind it. So there's a lot of cool things we can add to it, but we don't need to start. Um, bottom line, I guess, is if we keep doing what we're doing, we're gonna keep getting what we're getting. That's, I've used that in business my whole life. Uh, if something's not working, and you continue just to make a little change and do the same thing, you're going to keep getting the same results. The only way to get new results is by trying something new. But one thing I can guarantee you is if you did do something like this, and it was done correctly, we would generate visitors off that tree. Guarantee it. Now, I can't make them buy from anybody in Trinidad, but I can guarantee we can get them off the tree. And I don't think a lot of um, other options out there can give you guaranteed results. So um, I will stand behind that because I've done this for 15 years. I know this one. Um, one more, and that's pretty much. Uh, oh, I got a question. Yeah, sure. This this comes from the round table here. Uh, I'm facilitating the health net groups. The health net group. And we're at the point now where our group has already uh, consolidated a lot of the information for the health resource guide that we're putting together, and then it's also going to go into the recreational portion of this all health related. So we are actually. Uh, looking now at what kind of, this is something that we talked about in the future, being able to get it online. We're also going to produce a hard copy. We've all already got costs of what that those costs will be. Now, I'd like to talk to you, probably our group would like to try to talk to you to see what kind of cost that we would have to build this and, and make this happen. Okay, um, once the app is built, it's kind of like Facebook. If you want to post something on Facebook, you can upload it or whatever it is, you're going to have, you have a login, and you can upload anything that you want. You can change it on the fly. If it's a PDF, you can upload it, download it, anything that you want to do. The, this, a lot of people think we're crazy in business, and maybe we are, because most people will build you a website or an application, and then they're going to charge you to change it. Every time something happens, you're paying 25 a dozen cents <coughs> By the end of the year, you're paying $5,000 for those changes. The things that we built, and we've done it for a few people, in town and we're doing some more right now is we let them have full access to the website. They own their website. They can log in and change it anytime that they want. And that's exactly what this is going to be, but it's not only going to be for one organization, it's going to be for a whole community. Now, the next, the major step here is we need to figure out who's going to be in control of this. Is the city going to control this? That way there's somebody at the city that says, oh, somebody's going to post this. Let's double check it. There needs to be an administrator or a group of administrators that okays these things because when you have the whole town available to upload things, they can say anything they want. And uh, you need to have some type of control. So somebody's gonna have to be an organization, company, somebody's gonna have to do that. But we can definitely do everything that you're saying. Well, we'll probably do it. We are, let, me, let me address that Phil just a second. But, uh, we had talked uh, last time about a, uh, an app steering committee. And, and in fact, I'm going to put a sheet out. And we we have already have some volunteers, people. That, so, what what we would do is, as part of the roundtable process, is form a steering committee where we can uh, guide, you know, give Jay their information so that we have that that feedback. The the key element, Jay Jay was right when he says you start off with the end product. That's how you define what you want, and then you work backwards and say, given if I'm going to have this piece of data up there, then that means it has to get into the system somehow. You, you do, you derive that. So uh, we're going to set up the, the, the steering committee, and uh, we, we can make and, and give our requirements and see what we're going to do. So one question I was going to say: We have we need some other than the meetings other than this meeting here off site, and possibly the next meeting that we have. I'll get your card and maybe contact. You. Give us some ideas and give you an idea of where, where we're headed. Okay, well, this that. whole system we're talking about is not cheap. Um, regardless if I did it at cost, it's not cheap at all. Mm -hmm. But if we all rub our pennies together as a community, we can afford to do something like this. So, bad questions back there. Um, give us a, a ballpark figure, Jay. And who would be paying? Ballpark? Uh huh. Ballpark. Forty to $100,000. And who would be paying? That's why I'm here. I don't know. Do any of you have 40 years? <laughs> I do. I do. No, um, I think it's going to take, like I said, it's going to take the community. I think if the city and the county kind of take ownership of it, 
they could maybe help get the development off the ground. And then let's say every other business owner and organization kicks in $25 to $100 a month, they can have a website, they can have all these different things very cheaply. So I mean, we can make it affordable if we get creative. Um, basically, to get this up, it's not about me making a dollar off of it to start out. It's about development cost. I mean, when we're talking about programmers, they make 60 to 100 bucks an hour, at least ours do. So when you have five or six of those working on it, it becomes very expensive very quickly. So it's just getting that initial part of it up and going. Anybody else? Uh, let's assume that this is already up and running and I own a small corner gift shop and I want to put information on there. Do I have to be a computer programmer no. or go to college? It is the most user-friendly interface and I I have people that can probably raise their hand here. We build systems for it's very user-friendly. Anybody can do it. And of course, it's going to take training. We're going to include training in this and we can have groups like this where we can show everybody exactly how to update, Maybe log in. To Word. Yeah, if you know how to, if you can run Microsoft Word, you can do it. If you can't run Microsoft Word, we can teach you to do it. So it's very easy, really. and um, I, I think it's just, uh, I think it'll be a really good thing for Trinidad. Um, I, I've always uh, followed this whole thing in business. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem, this is our solution to help Trinidad. And uh, pretty much all I have to say, I think. Yeah. One more? Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. Um, so I'm a user. I'm driving up I-25. And eventually, all communities are going to have these apps because we know that's the way to go. I am not very techno, you know, whatever the term is. Um, so I download this app when I'm driving near Trinidad. Is that because... I'm in the area and it pops up and there's an app and I can say yes, download, and then when I leave Trinidad, do I delete it from my computer or my phone? You see how, how ignorant I am. No, uh, the hope is most people don't take out their apps. They leave it there. So the hope would be that they keep it going and every time they pass by here, that app's gonna start popping up and saying you're next to this restaurant and so on. So the hope is that you don't, but the reason you're gonna download it and that's why it's important for everybody to have a website, everybody really talking about it on Facebook, is you gotta find it. And the more people that go to this app and this website, the higher popularity you're going to get. So when they are driving down Southern Colorado and they say, you know, places to stop or entertainment like restaurants, and they do that search, our app comes to the top. And the only way it's gonna do that is one paying tens of thousands of dollars or by popularity. So to start off, we can get everybody in Trinidad to download it and then start promoting it through our businesses and through the big billboard that we're wasting up on the freeway. However you want to promote it, we can just basically give people a reason to get there. And I think um, like the coupons and the different things will get people to download. Let's say Duran Oil went and did uh, a free gallon of gas for somebody. So they'll say, you know, it's free gallon of gas on the freeway, download this app to get it. Now they have access to everything in your So okay. we have to promote it as well. But, and Harry, you could be in Dallas, Texas, Say I'm planning a trip to Cheyenne, Wyoming, and you can download that app in Dallas, Texas, or Germany, or you know China. Okay. So any place you got, yeah. So it's downloadable from any any place in the world. So this is not only for local tourists. Uh, I don't know if you all know this, but we have a lot of Europeans that work for us, uh, from Bulgaria and so on. They think Trinidad is the most amazing exotic place because out in Europe, the old west is like coolest thing. They travel out here. They, we ran into a German couple just the other day and everything was closed. They wanted to see everything on a Sunday. Uh, this app and this website will also be able to be searchable and found through these people that would love this place and the trees and the Fisher's Peak that we take you know, for granted, they would think it's the most amazing thing. So there's a lot of opportunity out there. Yeah, I, my idea is to translate this. Once we get the app done and we get the website done, Sorry, this is just my little part of it, just my little idea if you guys like it. Um, we get so much feedback on Trinidad from people from Europe and from outside the area on how exotic and fun it is. And I've talked to them over and over and they just think 
cowboys are the coolest thing and the little town and the brick roads are the coolest thing ever. If we took all of our websites and this app and we translated them into German, Spanish, Italian, and French, they would have their app in their language. So our German friends, our Bulgarian friends could come here, explore Trinidad completely and not even have to completely know the language. So that's one of the later phases that is one of my ideas. And so if you guys have more ideas like that, it would be great. But I really think that Trinidad can be on a global market. It's, it's so beautiful here and so comfortable and people are so honest. Right or wrong, they're honest and that's gorgeous in today's society. So if we use technology and we use modern things and we promote the values that we have here that are very hard to find other places, we can be really successful. Uh, I really love this idea. I think this is actually like creating a virtual mall where Trinidad is going to benefit for it. Now, my question to you is this. Have you approached the major players here, like the banks, the city, to see, if they, to, to see if they want to want be subscribers, like to get the ball? Right. Um, this is new, and I actually, this is the first time I sent it to a few people in an email, but Lou has actually came to us and been working really closely to help with this presentation together and so on, and he's kind of the mastermind pushing this. We had this idea when we first moved here, two years ago, we two years ago and we started developing it, but then we started the magazine, we started the website, and all of our money <coughs> got funneled into that, so I was kind of left there collecting us. <coughs> And with people talking like Lou coming to us, I'm like, well, we already got a lot of that done. So, I mean, we can make it cheap. Because so. I think this is great. Like, the question that she was posting, if you're a subscriber, I imagine you're going to give them access to training. So, how you can make yes. the, mock, the, the most out of these. When we do uh, websites, we print out a whole step by step on how yeah. it works and so on. But, we, of course, we have to do training. We're going to have to work together to build it and make it sure it works. And then, when we bring everybody together and we have a bill, Right. And we try to make it work, it might not work. So that's, we gotta work together. So, yeah, like you said, for example, the rector can take advantage of, okay, I wanna make sure that uh, every day or daily, whatever, I can do this and this, uh, what's called a circuit, you know, and this uh, 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 web with the form and stuff that I can uh, uh, market my business in a way that I will be getting. And then everybody will have full control of yeah. how they market their business. I think it's great. But that is an idea that should not be let go. The answer to your, to your question is, Jay and Era have been very, very busy marketing this idea. We meet with them tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock for the SCRT to see how we can work with them. And I think they have contacted virtually every business in town, one way or another, to put this idea out and there is a tremendous amount of interest in the idea. I'm glad to hear that. This is the full scope. When I go talk to people, it's like, you know, put something in the magazine. So the magazine gets a lot of readers. That's not going to market Trinidad and bring people here. We've got to still put them out in Pueblo or at Tone and bring people here. The main part of this is everybody to have a voice in town what we have to offer. And we can't go around and write everything we need, we need to do so. I just want to say, I've been working at La Quinta for four years now, and so I do get to see a lot of people that travel, you know, into Trinidad and stuff, and they really don't have the information, but on a website like this, on their phones, they would have all their information, where to go eat, um, on the rating, and a lot of our people that come into town, our older couples and stuff, they just want to know where to go, what to do, and you know, you can only give them so much information and you tell them, okay, you want to go this way, go down Santa Fe Trail, and then they're saying, okay, and, but if they had the little dots and the information, they'll spend the money out here. They really like it out here. They just need some information off their phones that they feel comfortable with, and I think that's a fantastic idea. I, I love it. I really hope we can get this to work. Yes, me too. I'm going to ask the same question I ask quite often. Why can't we use the improve the cell service, the data service? That's a, I have IT people in here that I have no idea. All I, I know, I've, you have T-Mobile, it's horrible, so that's the latest question. That's why you get into trouble, Jim. T-Mobile gets you in trouble. But, uh, I know Verizon told me just two weeks ago that they are working to get 4G down here, but you know, they've been saying that it, it might be good to go there and 
it's nice and you know, I get great service. I hit Aguilar, and it's gone. And I know it worked because I had AT and T before, so you know, it's 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 up, it's something. That, well, actually, you know, I do know that um, as they come in and get permits, you know, to build the towers. I know that when Jim Montoya was commissioner, one of the things he always insisted is that if you're going to, we're going to, we're going to approve your request to, to put up a tower, but you got to, you, you know, you got to put another tower up over here to improve the service. So I, we, we do have some negotiating, but not much leverage. I think just in closing, um, I, I have a lot of experience. My team has, we have over 100 years of experience in what we do. Um, I guarantee locally and regionally, for what we do with websites, you're not going to find anybody better, cheaper, or faster. I guarantee that. And I think we've been proving that around town. And if you give us an opportunity, I know we can help every single business here in one way or another. And uh, I think a lot of people kind of look at us as a threat, and maybe some of the medias and so on. Um, the last thing I want to do is be part of the media like that. I mean, I, I, this is what I do for a living. Um, the magazine, the website, they're great pieces, but they're in addition to everything else that we have in here. So I would rather be working closer with the medias and working with them instead of against them because we do something totally different. So uh, if you have any questions, anything, I'll have business cards and we're always available, just we're not always available, but we'll always make time for you. Okay, thank you so much for that. One of the things to uh, think about is that when you saw the numbers of Jay, Presented up there, you know, we, we ought to be uh, conservative. Uh, think about a car coming off of I-25 and spending a, a hundred dollars. That's a tank full of gas and, and lunch. That's all it is today. So if we can get them to spend more, you know, you know more time than to fill up and eat lunch, go down and visit the shops, the restaurants, stay at the hotel. We're talking 250 plus dollars a month. I mean, a, a day. So uh, that's really where we're coming from. Now, uh, I mentioned uh, the app advisory group. Uh, I want to put out the sheet, but anybody who wants to really be, you know, part of the uh, advisory group for this to, to talk in particular, I'll put this out right here, and you can sign up uh, at the end of the session. And we Leading the charge is our mayor. <laughs> so. Okay, we're uh, Howard's got a few words to share with us. 